When it comes to planes, the number of accidents with 100 fatalities or more is near an all time low. And while the number of crashes may be going down, most are still occurring while the plane is either taking off or landing. I asked transportation expert Gus Ubaldi how to change that. Uh, I, I happen to be a, a member of the Civil Air Patrol, and one of the things we talk about is a sterile cockpit. When you're taxiing, taking off, landing, you're not talking about, hey, where should we go for lunch? You have to be concentrating on those things. Think about even landing a small plane. You're traveling at about 80 miles an hour, dropping out of the sky at about 400 feet per minute, and you want to land rubber side down and walk away from it. That's, that takes a lot of coordination. Flying through the air is relatively easy. Well, most crashes have happened because of some sort of mechanical error. How much would better pilot training help the situation? And just how much of it is bad luck that if things break midair, a crash is inevitable? Pilots are trained, uh, especially airline pilots, have to go through um, uh, recurrent training uh, on a periodic basis, and they go through simulators that are that will take them through everything that a plane will do, but without ever getting up in the air. So they are very well trained. Uh, just sometimes things uh, all come together the wrong way. Um, I'd like to ask you about trains and this train crash in sure. New York. Um, a reporter mentioned that a system called the Positive Train Control, or PTC, that advocates say would prevent many accidents. It would automatically activate the train's brakes and help prevent collisions as well. What are the barriers to implementing this around the world? Well, Positive Train Control is what's known as a com communications-based train control system. And it's designed that a train will get a signal, like a radio signal, telling it to go, uh, indicating where it should be, when it should be slowing down. But there are systems in place right now that can do the same sort of thing. Uh, the other barriers to it is the enormous cost and uh, action of implementation. You have to test systems. You have to make sure that they work with the trains. You have to make sure that there's a compatibility between uh, all systems. So those are the big barriers to it. And again, making sure the system is going to work. You don't want to put something in, in place that uh, everyone feels comfortable about but really doesn't work. Well, and then I guess there's training involved because um, talk about some of the risks, if any, if that system should activate by mistake. There's certainly nothing wrong with stopping a train when perhaps it should keep on going. There, nothing is, is wrong with that. Uh, what you then run into, though, is that at some point you have to move the train. So therefore, you then get permission to operate the train uh, independently of the PTC, and that may lead you to uh, overlook certain issues. Now suddenly the PTC is no longer operating. All right, Gus Ubaldi joining us from Cleveland, Ohio. We appreciate your time.